Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new here, I'm Tash, and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week, and I also put out regular tutorials. Right, so it is Wednesday the 7th of February, and I'm going to get started with my finished objects, of which there are none. So none this week, but I have been, um, I have got quite a bit of knitting to show. And I'll start with Friend from the Vault which is a segment where I talk about a knitting that I did, some kind of um, project that I made earlier, and I'm wearing it today. This is Buds and Branches by Carrie Bostick Hogue, and I used Road to China Light. Um, this darker color is Hematite, and the lighter color is Grey Pearl. I knit the smallest size, which is a 34 inch size, but I think my gauge must have been a little bit tighter because it seems a bit smaller than, um, I mean, yeah, it seems a bit smaller than a 34 inch. So I'll just put down below what my gauge was um, and also what um, what the finished measurement um, ended up being because I forgot to measure it. Um, so this pattern was in Making Magazine, Making One, and I've got quite a few of these. I don't even know if they're still making, making, making anymore, um, but I really, really enjoyed um, this magazine. It has lots of, um, you know, it has recipes and embroidery stuff and sewing projects. I, I don't think I've ever done anything out of them except knitting. <laughs> So, um, but I just enjoyed flipping through them. So this project actually has, um, so it has well, these buds that are meant to be sewn on it. And I actually didn't um, do that, even though I meant to, I always meant to. I have some um, contrast colors that I had planned to use to do the buds, but there was no sort of instructions in how to do them. And I probably need to look up how to do the little buds as an embroidery stitch. And I was just looking before the podcast whether anyone had put anything on Ravelry about it and I couldn't see anything. So unless I missed something somewhere, um, yeah, I'll have to look that up. And I would like to, because I think it's a really pretty feature. I'd always planned to do it. I'll show you um, some, of my, some of my contrast colors. I do, like I have a pretty yellow and I have these two sort of, that are actually very close in color, but they're not the same. One is Garnet and I think the other one is Carnelian, something like that. Carnelian, does that sound right? Um, yeah, Carnelian. Um, and then this one I think maybe Tourmaline, no, Topaz, Topaz. Um, and other than that, I actually have a fair bit left over. I have uh, two full skeins of the Grey Pearl. I don't know whether it, um, I bought what the, what the pattern said and it was just way more than I needed for the contrast. So I have two and a bit skeins because I actually have some in this bag as well. So I have a lot left over. So I've been thinking, obviously I want to use some of these for the buds. Um, and I could obviously use another yarn as well. Like I quite like the like the bright pink and I don't have a bright pink. So, um, and I could use a different yarn, but I probably want to choose something that has a little bit of a halo, like the Road to China Light. This is the softest, most amazing yarn. It's just, it's the one that I made um, the Stax hat out of and um, just, I uh, showed that just last week. So anyway, I do plan to do, um, I, obviously it's wearable now, um, but I, and it's lovely, lovely and soft. But I would like to maybe before next winter, I'll put that as one of my um, one of my plans. It's those little things that I just don't get to, like sewing on buttons or that I kind of keep putting off, going, yeah, yeah, I'll do that later. Um, and obviously, this is wearable as it is. So I made this in 2017. It does peel a tiny bit. Let me see, like not heaps. So um, yeah, just like. I mean, it's super, super soft, but it's not, I don't think it looks, like, I think it's held up pretty well. I don't think it looks, um, you know, ratty or anything. Um, yeah, so that is Buds and Branches. I'm just trying to think if it's actually in something else besides, I'll look up and see if it's only in Making Magazine or if you can actually buy it on Ravelry, and I'll, I'll mention that down below as well. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's my friend from the vault, and I think... Um, Yep, anyway, I'll move on to my works in progress, of which there are many. And I think I'll actually take this off because it's pretty warm here in Sydney. Right, um, so my first work in progress is a new one, and it is the Armour, sorry, Armour Pullover by um, Ankerstrick. And this is, um, I'm using Madeline Tosh Dandelion, Madeline Tosh Dandelion in the colourway paper and Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in Oat. And I'm knitting it on, and so this is a test knit for Anchor Strick. And this is how, how I, sorry, 
take that out of the way. This is how far I've just broken off the yolk. It's, um, and I'll try it on in a sec, but I'll just talk about it first. So um, it's top-down construction. Um, it's got a really lovely stitch pattern. And I'm using, in the pattern, it says you could sort of use anything like the, the this collar section between a 3.5 and a 4 and the body between a four and a four and a half. So I've gone on the smaller end of that spectrum, a three and a half for the collar, and then a four, sorry, 3.5 millimeter needle and a four millimeter needle for the body. And it's working out really well. I'm knitting size one, which is meant to be about 37 inches. I think my gauge is a bit, just a bit tighter, not a lot tighter, but a little bit tighter. I think it's coming out around maybe 34, 35 inches. Um, so it's got raglan, so you knit this collar here, grab those needles, it's got raglan increases. Um, I just need to probably tidy that up a little bit. When I was doing the first couple of raglan increases, I probably just used a little bit too much yarn there. So all I'll do is I'll just get some, um, I'll get some yarn and duplicate stitch um, just over that, those couple of slightly larger increases. Um, after that, once I sort of realized, oh, I need to hold that tension quite tight when I do those increases, um, then it's been fine further down. So it's got some really clever increases um, down the, the raglan shaping for the arms and sleeves to be able to incorporate the stitch pattern, which I really like. It's, very, um, it's a really clever design, um, really lovely group on Ravelry. And I, I like that I'm able to talk about it too. I checked with um, Anka to make sure that was okay. And yep, she was totally fine with that. Um, let me see. Oh, so where am I up to? I have this, I've knit one full, of, um, I've knit a full skein of the Madeleine Tosh Dandelion. I've got three of those and I have four of the oat. So I've just started the second skein of the, um, of the dandelion and I'm on the second ball of the knitting for olive. So I've got two more uh, and I've got this in my, um, knitting swan, uh, roses bag. So I've got two more of those. So what I think I'll do, I'll just, I'll try it on so you can see. Um, I've only really just started the um, going down the body, but it's definitely able to be tried on. I've got about, I think I've done about 10 or 12 rows underneath here. So you can see that it's got like a funnel, a funnel neck, come closer, a funnel neck collar, um, raglan increases. Um, let me see what else. now. Um, no, no shaping down the body, so just knitting straight down. I will do, when I've got a little bit more fabric, I'll measure exactly how much it is across, but I think it's about 34, 35, in, maybe 35 inches. You can see there, I've just got to um, tidy those up just a little bit. Um, I will block it. So what I'm going to do, because I'm a little bit tight on yarn, I've got 900 meters. And the pattern, because obviously I'm test knitting it, it's not like lots of people have knit it and they've already worked out the yardage. So Anka thinks my size one should take about 850 meters. And obviously like if you lengthen it a bit or you make your sleeves longer or shorter or whatever, you're gonna use more or less. So um, I'm at the point now where what I'm gonna do is I'm going to weigh how much I have left in this. And then I'm going to work out, you know, like make a note of where, where I am, knit the rest of this and see how many rows that got me and what that row gauge is pre and post blocking. So I'm going to block it at that point. I might actually even start the sleeves with a new, um, you know, with a new, uh, like I'll keep this attached, start the sleeves with a new soft silk mohair and um, dandelion and maybe get a little bit of a way and then I'll block it. And then that will help me work out, like in terms of um, once I've worked out how many grams of each, like I'll weigh both, right? But I'll knit to the end of this, um, how many inches for however many stitches, like just to make sure, you know, I'll do the math and go, right, okay, let's say, you know, 10 rows uses this many grams and, you know, which is about so many inches, probably I do it over a much longer section because it's quite a bit of yarn. I feel like I'm rambling a bit, but the point being, I want to make sure that I save enough for the body so I don't make the sleeves crazy long and then the body is too short or because um, what I will do is I will, I'll, I'll knit pretty much a whole sleeve. I think that's, I have to do that anyway for the test knit because it's due February 28. Um, but I think, I think that would make sense for me anyway. I'm curious to see how this blocks because when I looked at 
um, anchors before she um, like before she blocked it and after and she's using different yarn than me but um, it looked like this before she blocked it but then after she blocked it it was definitely a lot wider and lower so I'm really and I'll be happy with either way like I like it like this um, but I'd also like it like a little bit wider and lower that either would be fine so which is good because I can't control it um, so I'm going to block it once I've once I have finished this and maybe done some of the sleeve um, I'll block it just to make sure I'm happy with how the sleeve is going and also to work out length and everything and see how it you know like if it grows a ton then that will really inform me in terms of how much more I need how much more knitting I need to do on the body for sure so I must measure it before and after I block it's not much point measuring it after and then going oh it's now six inches well what was it before like did it grow from five to six did it grow from four to six so not that I think it would grow that much but hopefully you get the idea so this is my new work in progress and I'm really enjoying it and yeah it's lovely so um anyway I'll talk more in my week about when I did it but this is five days worth of knitting pretty much so yep all right I'm gonna take it off because it's hot um my uh, and then my other works in progress are just the same five because I haven't finished anything the same five that I had last week but I have made some progress uh sorry so I'm just gonna put all that out of the way so my um, second work in progress is the Stockholm Slipover by Petite Knit. I'm using Rowan Felted Tweed um, DK in Scree and Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in Baby Blue. And I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna try it on because I forgot to try it on last week. Oopsie, banging, okay. Right, so this is looking pretty big, actually, <laughs> quite big. But obviously I've got it over a, um, you know, like a singlet top. And um, like I mentioned last week, I would plan to wear it over a blouse. And I also haven't, um, you know, like I haven't, see, I know that looks massive, right? But I am going to be picking up stitches around here and that will be coming in and picking up stitches here as well. So um, I'm just coming down the body here. This hasn't got a lot of attention because I've been putting more time into the armor sweater, but I am um, I am liking it. Like I I think it's um I think it's coming on nicely. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else I was going to say? Yeah, I'm probably at that point. Like I'll probably only work on this maybe when armor's blocking. So if I you know if I can, because armor's actually even though it's got that stitch pattern, it's very intuitive. It's very easy. I don't really have to think about it while I'm knitting. I just do a quick check. Am I am I ready to, you know, change to the next section? Um, other than that, it's, yeah, it's, I do it while I'm um, either working or reading or whatever. So yeah, this is, um, this is coming along well. I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, not too much to say, except um, when I'll work on it a bit when armor is blocking. And I, I really want to get armor done and then I'll come back to this one. So this one may not get a lot of attention. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's that one. Um, camisole number four by my favorite things. I actually haven't, um, I haven't done any work on this, but so I'll just really quickly mention it in case you haven't seen it before. Camisole number four by my favorite things, knitting for olive, pure silk in the colorway raspberry pink, I'm using slightly smaller needles, three millimeter needles. Um, I'll put it, I might put it on over this because last time I had it on over my blue bonnie so it looked a little bit ridiculous um, and I still wouldn't wear it over over a top like I'd wear it like just a, with a bra and that would be it um, but I think what I might do I might try and do it this week if I can like when I have a bit of quiet time where I'm just going to knit and not try to do something else at the same time sorry just making sure I haven't lost any stitches um, I think I'll do the like just to kind of move me off the pause button with this I think I'll do the straps so um, I'll start by doing them here and I'll make a decision as to whether I want to do ties or I want to just do one strap and attach it if I do decide to do one strap and attach it at the back I will really tug on it quite um, quite tightly and like steam it and pull it to make sure that um, all of the give is out of it and it's not going to stretch out any longer so um, yep so I don't think there's anything else I only have two balls so this is one ball that I've knit so far 
and that's my second that's my second ball which I haven't started yet so and I've knit a swatch out of this one so I definitely have plenty because there's not there's not heaps to not heaps to go so yeah really like I mean I really like this one I definitely want to wear it um, it's sort of got put aside because I thought once I start with this on the if I start with this on the body then I'm not going to want to stop and do the straps so I need to do the straps now and I just haven't had the you know like I might do that this weekend maybe Saturday um, yeah I have to kind of schedule that in and just be like because otherwise I'll just do I'll try to knit and like my default is knitting while doing something else so um, yep so that's camisole I have to be a little bit careful taking this one off um, camisole number four by my favorite things uh, my next work in progress actually got a lot more um, work than I thought it would because I um, anyway it doesn't matter why I it's the half and half wrap so I'm knitting the half and half wrap out of Pearl Soho Linen Quill and this is Bird's Egg Blue and the other colour hmm, is Red Poppy, where is it? There it is, sorry, uh, Red Poppy. So that's um, the two colours together, but you knit all of the first colour before you change to the second colour. And I'm knitting it, I've actually just popped some little stoppers on the end because this is just, this is the Pearl Soho Linen Quill, these slippery needles is just flying and I've got a lot of stitches 260 stitches on this I think maybe 80 centimeter cable they're just flying off the needles <laughs> um, which isn't great um, at least they're kind of staying like even if it does fall off they're staying intact so I could just pop the needle back on but yeah it's just easier if I put some stoppers on so I've actually made a lot of progress on that so last week I had eight ridges and now I've got uh, 22 ridges and so that's my edge which I'm slipping I'm just slipping the first stitch and so that just keeps it a little bit denser on the edge and less a little bit tidier and on the other end is where I'm doing the short rows and I think that is the right side so that's looking nice and you can see sort of that's where I'm um, eventually like I think there's only 23 if there's 22 rows there's 23 stitches there and I need to get all the way along to the 260 this is a free pattern um, so yeah that's a very long-term project last week I had 86 grams in this ball and now I've got 62 so I've knit 16 grams which is pretty substantial um, like I don't think I'll keep that up I just um, yeah, knit a lot on this because I just needed something where I didn't have to pay attention at all, which is obviously this, it's just garter. There's, you only have to just do a tiny little bit of paying attention when you get to the short rows and I do a wrap and turn um, short row, which is what is mentioned in the pattern. Um, yep, so that one has made some good progress. And yeah, I, I was watching an Italian knitter earlier um, this morning and she had her half and half wrap that she was I think the second one that she'd made that was she was giving to her mum and it just looked beautiful um, yeah so I'm, I'm excited to finish that one and two more projects to go um, I've got the Oslo hat with mohair that I'm knitting out of um, this uh, KFS opal sock yarn with this glitter and um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colorway Nectar left over from my sorrel on a 3.25 millimeter needle, 112 stitches. I'm actually just about to do the fold. So um, with my two previous ones, because I've only made this twice, no, I've made a third one, but I sent it away. So the two that I've got with me that I made previously, this was my first one in DK weight yarn. And I was a bit worried about, actually I wasn't worried about running out of yarn. I was just was conscious that the brim might be huge. So I did, a, I did six and a half inches and then did the fold and with this one I did seven and up which is the pattern written as as written seven and a half or seven point two five inches and then did the fold so um, this one's a little bit a little bit shorter and you can see that from the brim like this brim is a little bit longer so the reason I pulled these two out is I am a bit conscious of being a bit short of yarn. So I thought I had 230 meters, but it's actually not 230 meters, it's 211 meters. And I thought I was gonna run out of the mohair, but actually I found another little ball, another five grams of mohair. So I have tons of mohair, but I have no more of this and I can't buy this because I've got it in Japan. So I think what I'm going to do, like. With this one, I got to seven and a half inches before I did the brim. 
I'm at seven inches now and I think that's kind of I've used half of the I've used half of this yarn to knit seven inches and then when I measure this from here up obviously you've got decreases to take into account um, from here to here it's about six and I don't know I'm gonna be cutting it a bit fine if I go to seven and a half inches and I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference because obviously when you fold it that's only a quarter of an inch difference so um, I think I'm just going to do one more round. Oh, maybe I've already done it. Um, up to the seven inches. Yeah. And then I'm ready to unpick. So I did a, a provisional. Did I already say this is by Petite Knit? I was like hat with mohair by Petite Knit. I did a provisional cast on. And so I'm at the point where I will unpick that, put it on another needle, and then I'll be knitting the um, knitting one stitch from the cast on and one stitch from the needle. Um, so you're sort of knitting two together, well, you are knitting two together, but one from here and one from here all the way around. And because it's the cast on, this should be exactly the same number of stitches as I have on the needle. So it's one for one all the way around and then you just keep knitting up. So um, yes, I think I'm just going to cut out half an inch and that way I'll feel a bit safer that I'm not going to run out of yarn and I think it will be perfectly big enough as a hat. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was thinking actually if anybody wanted to um, see that, if they wanted me to do a video, because I'm just about to do it and it doesn't take me very long. Um, I know I've got lots of other tutorial videos, but um, it's something I'm going to do anyway, and so I would just record myself doing it. It would be a tutorial. I'd record it properly and show, um, show myself unpicking it and then show myself knitting the two together. If anyone wanted to see that, um, maybe just put a mention in the comments and I'll record it and upload that. So... That, yep, so that's definitely um, making good progress. And given that I'm halfway through the yarn, and I'll probably use most of the most of the yarn, I'm halfway through the hat. And my last work in progress is the skimmer socks. I still haven't woven in the ends from this one. Um, this is using Three Mums sock yarn and then some Vespa sock yarn for the trim. So this has definitely made good progress. I because um, I. Uh, have been working on this when I've been walking. So I'm on the bottom of the foot now and I've just started to make the gusset heel increases. And I'm using a 2.25 millimeter needle. And then when I do the um, the ribbing, I use a two millimeter needle, which is, that's exactly what the pattern says. Um, so I thought, what I might do, that's it for my works in progress. I thought I might talk a little bit about um, walking and knitting because I've had a few people ask me questions about that. The only way I could record myself doing that is either if I had a GoPro, which I don't, and I don't see myself buying one, um, or I go for a walk with like one of my kids and I say, can you please video me while I do this? Um, but then it might make you dizzy. So I'll just talk a little bit about what I do when I'm walking and knitting. So I usually have something like the skimmer socks that is very lightweight so that it's not too much on my like hanging off my hands and there's not too much in the ball. I This is the project bag that I usually take with me. I usually wear shorts that have a belt loop on them and this has a carabiner and so I just hook that onto my belt loop and the yarn like this is in my hands and then this is just going to you know to attach to the belt loop here. Um, this is a little bit of a mess um, from when I got back from my last walk and the ball is falling apart so I'll definitely rewind that before I go for my next walk with this because otherwise I'll end up with a huge like tangle and that's yeah that's going to be tricky. The other thing that I do sometimes is if I don't if I've got shorts that don't have um, belt loops and this is a a small ball um, I just make sure I'm wearing something with pockets so that I can pop the ball in the pocket um, in and obviously not tight pockets so it can't be like a stretch material with stretchy it'd have to be sort of loose -ish shorts with a decent enough um, pocket now sometimes uh, like size this, sometimes if I'm knitting something like a muscle bra hat or I wouldn't knit anything with more than a hundred grams so these skimmer socks are fantastic the most I have is when I have one ball I've got about 30 max would be 50 grams so I'm not carrying too much either in my pocket or um, hanging off my belt loop and um, the other thing is uh, oh yeah if it's something like a muscle bra which is you know 100 gram ball that's okay I can manage that but sometimes you know by the end of the muscle bra that's getting pretty long so and it's also getting pretty weighty off the needle so I just put drape the muscle bra over do I have a muscle bra somewhere 
um, I'll grab one. So um, I'll just pull this out. So if I was knitting on this and I'm, I'm this far up and I've got this hanging off the needles, what I do is I just drape that over my, my arm so that I can knit, 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 and that's still sitting, um, like taking the weight of the project. So um, I think that's it. That's all I, that's all I do to, um, like when I'm walking and knitting, to make sure that it's like, um, yeah, feasible. It helps if you can knit without looking. I definitely do look down sometimes, right? I don't exclusively look straight ahead. And I usually walk on somewhere that's fully paved. Like I don't do, I wouldn't do a bush walk or anything with that's not um, like a really nice flat surface. I don't wanna hurt myself. Um, yep, yeah, so that's the little tips that I could add about um, walking and knitting. Right, so I am up to my purchases. Now I talked at last week that I did make some purchases and they actually, a couple of them, the ones the, the ones that were coming to my house, not the ones coming to my in-laws, they actually, both packages arrived, one yesterday and one today, so I'm gonna show you them. So the package that arrived yesterday came from the wool factory in the UK and I bought the Rowan Patina. So Beck mentioned this because she was buying it for um, Charisma and she ordered the gold colorway and I just, I thought the, the top looked so pretty. So, and of course I'm pink girl, so I ordered the pink colorway. And this is actually, this was such a good deal. This was like, um, I think uh, I was really lucky. Like I think when I first went to the website, there was like 45 balls or something. And then by the time I finally got around to ordering it, they were down to nine balls. And I was like, ah, I need, um, I bought five. I think I only needed four, but I was a bit worried with this of like, it wouldn't be easy to get again. So I bought five just in case. So this is actually a really interesting yarn. It was only like five pounds 40 a ball. It is 50 grams. It's um, mohair, 46% mohair, 24% uh, nylon, 20% wool and 10% polyester. And I think the polyester is probably that, like that sparkle. See, it's got a bit of a gold sparkle. So pretty. So I really love this Charisma top. Um, it's my, um, by Martin Story. So I'm kind of, I'm talking about plans here, but because I know exactly what I'm gonna make with this, but I'm not gonna make it straight away. So I think Beck and I are going to do a, um, a knit along with it. So, but she's got, um, she's working on her garden sweater. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna show you that in just a second, because she's actually sent me a picture of her progress. But I think we'll do a knit along for it. Now the pattern is written, like a lot of Rowan patterns, knit, uh, is knit flat and seamed. And, you know, I kind of don't mind that. I had a bit of a look at the pattern, um, especially with the construction, because it's got these kind of bat wing. The front and the back are mostly the same. There's, most of the seaming is just up the side and like a side seam in mattress stitch is no big deal. Um, I think I'd quite, I think I might actually quite, there's something quite nice about just knit, knitting a piece and it not being just all of this work on the needles. And looking at the style as well, it's not, um, like it's very, it's blousy, right? So it's not like it's got to be a specific size and I won't be worried about that. Um, and I think I'll probably just knit it mostly to pattern, especially because you've got this rib and you've got this sort of blousiness. Um, and I'm using the recommended yarn, so I'm not like, oh, how's my how's my yarn gonna be different? Is it gonna be, you know, different gauge or whatever? Which I know gauge can be a bit, can be, it's personal, but it helps if you're using the recommended yarn. And this yarn is really, 50 grams is 250 meters. Yeah, 250 meters, that's huge, massive yardage for um, what is kind of like a DK weight yarn because it's so fluffy. So um, Beck and I will do a knit along with it. The f there are a few things that I know I will do differently and it's like a one page pattern, right? One page, so different to so many of the patterns that are like 16 pages. But um, what I don't like, and I'll definitely change this, is when it comes to the shoulder shaping, there's a lot of stair stepping, so you bind off, you know, do a row, bind off, bind off. And then when you seam, that's really, it's hard to get that kind of seam along the shoulder with that stair step looking nice. And it can look quite bulky. I'm gonna put a picture up of, they've actually got um, a picture of like where you can see the seam. So what I think I'll do instead, and I've definitely done this before with these sorts of bottom up pieced sweaters, you actually do short rows. So instead of binding off, you just, you know, do it either a German short or a wrap and turn. So instead of binding off, you just turn and come back. 
and then that what that does is it keeps all of your live stitches on the needles but you get the shaping that you need but you just haven't bound off you've just turned and then um, and then you finish it off with a three needle bind off which still creates stability and structure which is good um, although it's not going to be a very he heavy top but it does you know um, I mean I could graft it but I don't I don't think there's any value in that like I think a seam there along the top shoulder is fine but it might be a little bit sort of a softer and nicer seam than trying to match a stitch with all of the stair stepping not good at all um, and then the other thing that was kind of interesting about the pattern and it's a free pattern the the ribbing on the bottom this is really weird so you knit it flat and on the right side row you knit through the back loop purl knit through the back loop purl now normally you would think when you come back on the wrong side you would purl through the back loop knit purl through the back loop knit but you don't do that at all you just knit one purl one knit one purl one I'm like so every other stitch like twist twisted straight twisted straight that's weird I don't really understand that I don't know if that's an error or that was intentional it's kind of a weird normally you'd think twisted rib you want the whole you want all the knits twisted um, so I'm curious about that and somebody else mentioned that in their pattern uh, in their project page the other thing about that is um, one lady what she did was she um, she actually did the came back and did the ribbing in the round later so she knit the front knit the back but just without the ribbing and then picked up the stitches around which you could do I mean you could do that with a provisional cast on or you could actually physically pick up the stitches I'd probably if I did it I'd do it with a provisional cast on then when you're knitting in the round you're only knitting through the back loop purling so you don't have to purl through the back loop on the reverse side so something something to think about I'll have a think about whether I want to do that or not um, if I did that I would just do a provisional cast on for the front and the back whatever same thing I, I still would do it separately provisional cast on knit one row even and then start the pattern um, it's really with a provisional cast on you definitely want to have at least one knit row um, if you've got like if you're ribbing or if you've yeah it's just it doesn't unpick nicely that's all I'm saying so I would do one knit row and then I'd work the work the pattern um, they're probably the main changes that I would make um, you know other than that I'll knit it in pieces but I won't start that for a while but it's it's nice to have the yarn and I know exactly what I'm going to make with it and then if I if I do end up only using four balls and I have one left over that would make a really nice um, Oslo hat and I wouldn't obviously need to hold it with mohair because it is mohair so that's um, one thing that arrived from the wool factory and so because shipping was like 17 pounds um, which was more than what the yarn was going to be well maybe not more but it was a lot um, I thought I've been wanting yarn for the Avena sweater by um, Jennifer Steingas and I saw on someone's project that they had made it um, out of Drops Charisma and I'm going to put a picture of the lady's project that inspired me um, and I really liked it I liked how she she didn't use a gradient but she used three different colors so I got the same yarn and the same base color now I thought I was getting the three same colors that she used one of them is not right um, so you can probably tell which one is not right <laughs> this one is a really different red and it's a red I really don't like it's just I don't know I don't know what it is about that I just don't like it um, it's also you know it's a very flat color so there's no depth to it this is one of the mix colors these are not mixes but because they're just gonna be in the color work I think they'll be all right and I, I do like the kind of wheaty sort of colors with that but this this kid's wrong so I have three balls uh, sorry two balls of this one one of this so I could just do two balls or I could take a look in my stash to see if I have anything else that might work um, and so obviously don't use need a lot of it um, and it's a fairly standard kind of like it's uh, it's 100% wool 50 grams is 100 meters um, I'm sure I could find something either fingering weight held double or um, or some DK weight yarn that might go with that so I'll do a bit of um, you know and I wouldn't even need necessarily a whole 50 gram ball so I'll just go and do a little bit of playing and see or I could just use two so that's really nice to have that um, something ready for Avena because that's been in my queue for a really long time and I haven't figured out what yarn I wanted to use for it this is a very like this is this was one pound 67 a ball so it was a very budget conscious so the fact that I bought one that I probably won't use, um, no big deal. Right, 
I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'll probably keep it in somewhere for something for color work or something. It's not like a next to skin kind of thing that I could make a Sophie scarf or actually a Sophie scarf uses more than 50 grams anyway. Um, it's not horrible, it's not horrible, but it's not, you know, it's not where you would normally want it um, for that kind of pattern. So that's from the wool factory. The other thing that arrived is um, yarn that I bought on D-Stash. So um, a lady was selling some Shibui Silk Cloud. Um, this is on the Australian Knitters Forum on Ravelry. And I love Shibui Silk Cloud. I've um, used it before for some mitts for Mia. Um, and I just, it's just such lovely, lovely yarn. So she was selling four, this is the black colorway called Abyss. So I've got four of those skeins. This is super, super soft. Like not all silk mohairs are the same. This one's particularly nice. It is, I think it's a fairly high percentage of silk as well. So it's 60% kid mohair, 40% silk. So I got four balls of that. And she was also selling, and that's 300 meters in each. So I've got 1200 meters. So I could hold it double and do like a ranunculus, or I could hold it with another, like a fingering weight and do a sweater. So I haven't decided yet. Um, but I just knew when I saw it on D Stash, and I just love this yarn. And Shibui isn't making yarn anymore. Um, I thought, yes, I definitely want it. And um, this is a camel colorway. So because that's 300 meters, I've got plenty for um, mm. pairing with something for an Oslo hat. Um, not sure about that color, but you know, maybe some depending on what's underneath it. We'll see. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice. It's so pretty and shiny. And the other thing that I picked up was, um, that she was selling was a sing another single skein of Road to China Light in the colorway Cobalt, which is sort of a blue, a purpley, bluey purple, I think. It's showing more blue on the camera, but to me it looks, oh, it is kind of, I don't know. It's in between blue and purple. Um, which I could use for, um, with those other colors that I was thinking for my, um, you know, for my, um, uh, Buds and branches doesn't really go very well there does it because that's like red purples and that's blue purples um but at the very least i could make a stacks hat out of it um they look nice together though don't they like that would be quite nice for a stripey don't you think that would be because i've got so much of this i have so much of this that could be with these two as sort of the main ones with a few little random stripes of not random but like scheduled stripes of that that i think i might do something like that um, oops, lost the ball. Uh, anyway, so she, um, I bought this one as well, and I'll use that for maybe probably for a stacks hat because that was a really nice pattern. Um, the other thing, though, when I opened the package because it just arrived today, everything, all the yarn, was put inside this project bag from Freckled Freckled Whimsy. So Fee's the name of the lady that I um, bought the yarn from. She just threw in a project bag as a as a gift. I didn't buy this. This was just a really lovely here, you know? And I just, it just, I don't know. I just was like, oh, like, I didn't have to do that. That was so sweet. And, um, you know, people's generosity is just, I don't know. I love seeing it, whether it's towards me or towards someone else, just seeing someone do something nice because they want to do something nice for someone. Um, yeah, made me feel very special and very, very happy. So I'm so excited. I have a new project bag. It's really cool. Um, I love that. Um, like the, the colors and everything and yeah it's so pretty so yes that's they are my purchases for that arrived this week and then I have other purchases that are coming when my in-laws come so I'll talk about that when they come so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was Beck's garden sweater so um, we had a bit of a like a, a chat on the weekend and she, um, she uh, sent me this morning a photo of her um, is it secret garden sweater um, pullover and she's doing the the gradient she finished the gradient section so she sent me a picture of that it looks so pretty um, I just love it so she's almost done with the body now I just got like finishing up with the gray and then she's gonna move on to the sleeves so we will um, we'll do um, well she's saying Beck said she'll do a knit along with me with the um, Charisma sweater, but obviously she's going to finish because she's a bit more of a monogamous knitter than me. She'll finish that one, and then we'll start um, we'll start this one um, Charisma together, and I'll like try and just keep pace with her, and we'll do um, like yeah, just knit on it together. Even though we don't live in the same city, we can talk about it. Um, right, so that's it for my um, I think that's it for my purchases and kind of like general plans. Um, 
yeah, my other plans, I'm not going to cast anything new on this week. Um, I think this week my plans are to give armor some progress and hopefully, I don't know, I'm not sure how far I'll get, but definitely progress progress done on armor. I want to get that um, Oslo hat past the, um, the join and knitting up a little bit because then that's kind of, then it's sort of, you know, basic stock and in the round once I've done that. And um, what else? Was there anything else I really wanted to do? Oh yeah, and I'll do the straps on cami number four. That's kind of my um, my plans for this week. Definitely nothing new to cast on. What has caught my eye? Um, I I think when I was doing some like shopping for the poppy tea, I was looking at the uh, Hermé colour in the Cardiff cashmere for it and it was um, sold out pretty much everywhere. At least not, I couldn't buy enough for a top for myself. But in looking at it and looking at other people's projects, I was like, oh, this yarn looks so pretty. And then when I was watching an Italian knitter this morning, she actually just bought a whole sweater quantity of it. So it's funny how sometimes, you know, you're thinking of things, but in looking at different projects with that yarn, um, I came across a lady, Lena Ram, that's what she's, um, her name on Ravelry. And she made a wool and berries by Hohi Locatelli. And she used like a, I don't know if it's white and black, but almost white and almost black um, sort of version of it. And it just looked so pretty. So, and then of course, once I looked at that project of hers, I had a look at some of other, her other projects on Ravelry and she's got an amazing, like gorgeous projects. So of course then I followed, found her on Ravelry and she's got like 17,000 followers. So I'm not the first person to discover this lady's beautiful projects. So um, I guess that's a what has caught my eye pretty much her Instagram feed and her projects, which is really beautiful. But that was inspired by that wool and berry sweater. The other um, Cardiff Cashmere um, project that I liked the look of was Amy Miller's Chevra Mania hat. Um, and that uses two, two balls, two contrasting colors of um, the Cardiff Cashmere. I don't know if that's what she designed it in, but I just saw a picture of a project in it and that looked really nice. Um, other things that I that has caught my eye um, just recently, I saw on Instagram a lady, I think her name's Clara Eggers, a colorwork sweater that's in a few different kinds of fingering and mohair yarn that she's actually designing. Um, and I haven't heard of her as a designer before, so I just sort of, I've got on Instagram like a, sa a bookmark thing where I save. So I save recipes and knitting and sewing and stuff. So I just, you know, saved that. Because um, obviously she hasn't, it hasn't come out yet, but I thought, oh, I'll have to find her on Ravelry and see what else she's done. Anyway, it looks really pretty. The other two things were, um, uh, actually it was one project that looked really pretty, it was by Anne Wenzel. And um, it says Tone Tone, I don't know if that's what it's called, but it was a really nice V-neck. And when I first looked at it, I thought it was one color, but it actually was two different colors in some very large stripes, but very subtle change. Um, I probably wouldn't do the two colors, but it just looked really, looked really interesting from the back of the neck. Um, it's got a really deep V-neck and I don't wear a lot of V-neck, so I'm not sure I'd make it, but it caught my eye. I thought it was really pretty. And then I thought, Anne Wenzel, what else have I, have I liked anything else of hers? And then I realized her colored crosses sweater was one that I had um, mentioned as a what has caught my eye before. So I might have to go and have a look at her stuff on Ravelry and do a little digging. Not that I need to like, I think that colored crosses, I would probably put that in my queue. It's all over color work, but gee, it looks pretty. Um, but I am, I'm kind of curious as to, I've, I've got it up on my computer in front of me. Um, I'm curious as to what the yarn is actually, I'm not even sure what the yarn is. So anyway, I'll, I will definitely take a bit of a further look at that. It's, at the very least, it's saved in my, um, in my Instagram um, bookmarks. Right, um, I think that's it for all of my like purchases and plans and what's caught my eye and all of the regular part of the podcast. Podca podcast. So I'm just gonna get into um, personal stuff, which will be, oh, I was gonna say pretty short, but you just never know. Um, so if you're f um, leaving now, thank you so much for watching and um, hopefully I'll have a tutorial um, on the weekend. And other than that, I'll be back here next week with another weekly, what did I knit? Um, right, so personal stuff. Last week, it's been really busy with work, but one thing that was really nice was my husband um, finished work early on a Friday last Friday and he said do you want to go to the beach because it was like 36 degrees here which is maybe 96 or something Fahrenheit it's very warm and and I was like oh I've got work to do I was like 
it can wait, right? So I went to the beach with him and um, the armor sweater had just been released and I had just knit a swatch, so I was ready to cast on. So I actually cast on on the way to the beach with my husband, so he was driving and it's about a half hour drive. Um, and yeah, I cast it on and I knit the first few rows at the beach. And yeah, I spent quite a bit of time on the weekend um, watching some videos on vectors and um, which is the next topic that I'm going to be teaching my year 12 students and, and knitting on the armor sweater. So like eventually I'm going to have to stop watching the videos and start doing some actual creating my own lessons. But at the moment, just in refreshing myself for the next topic, I can actually knit while I watch these videos, which is nice. Um, oh, and then Saturday afternoon, I have this really good friend who um, started this charity called the Reconnect Project. And if you're here in Sydney, it's in Penshurst or Peakhurst. I always get those two mixed up on the south side. And what it what they do is they take um, like donated phones and iPads and computers and things and then refurbish them and pass them on to people in need, whether it's someone who's, um, you know, like who's found themselves without much money, through they've been laid off or whatever, or there might be someone fleeing domestic violence, or it might be someone in a hospital or someone in aged, that maybe they just want an old phone to be able to listen to music. Um, or to read books on an iPad on the Kindle app. Anyway, so that's what she does. And she's so busy because she started this herself and she's a single mom and super, super busy. But um, her sister lives up the road and her sister's kids were having a bake stall. <laughs> and um, so we, I went up, she was coming over to support that. So I grabbed, you know, when, when you have friends and their lives are really busy, I'll take whatever opportunity I can get to um, to hang out. So I got to catch up with her for an hour and have cookies. And it, unfortunately for the kids, it was another stinking hot day, but they had, um, oh, you know, like fruit kebabs and, and, and we were in the shade anyway. And um, yeah, it was just really nice. So I did that on Saturday afternoon. And these kids are so sweet. The, the four children in the family, um, Alex used to babysit them. So she did that before um, she started working in childcare. So it was really nice to see them because I hadn't seen them in about a year or two and they'd grown up quite a bit. And um, anyway, it was, I, I loved it. Like connection is so important for me, spending time with friends. And, um, and I guess that's why I really like doing this podcast. It sort of feels like, you know, I'm not just knitting by myself. I make something, I show you, you guys comment and show me what you're making. And I follow you on Instagram as well. And I see what you're doing. I wish Instagram didn't have so much in my feed of stuff. Like I wish it was just like it used to be where it was just people you knew. Um, anyway, it's not, but I just find that's what bothers me. Like I would like to just look and see what people are making, but in doing that, I'm like, I'm just, you know, I find myself, myself watching cat videos and um, some things are good though. I've been seeing a lot of recipes and stuff, but yeah, like I just, just silly stuff. Um, yes, which I don't really want to do. I do want to see what people are making, but I don't want to watch 50,000 like, here's someone washing a dog. And anyway, um, that's enough on that. So I think that's kind of it for, for personal stuff. I am doing a lot of work, knitting while I'm working. And yeah, that's, that's kind of my last week coming up. Um, I've got something really exciting on Friday, actually. I'm going to a concert. My daughter, Mia, is singing with a band, not like a professional band, like it's a group of um, doctors who also are, um, they're all, I don't know if they're cardiologists, but they work in, and they're called the Murmurs. <laughs> um, they're playing at a local place in Newtown and she's singing with them. So, and like some really cool songs, I'll put up the set list. Um, so very much my era. Uh, yeah, so she's going to be singing. So I'm going to be watching on, um, going to watch her on Friday night. So that will be fun. I think we'll go together and I don't mind going a bit early because there's probably not a lot of seating. So, and the other thing is, um, so I'll be watching her and her, um, it's long story, but, um, I was a single mum with Mia when I met my husband. So Mia has, um, and it's actually her biological father who's in the band and she has a good relationship with him and he's a good person. Um, and I love his family and I'm close to, really close to his mum. So Mia's grandma. So she's going to be there, actually her grandma and her grandfather. So um, they're going to be there watching and I don't get to see them that much. So all of this personal stuff, it's all connection, right? It's just love spending time um, with people that I um, care about. So I'm looking forward to watching Mia sing, 
um, listening to live music and catching up with Mia's grandma, Jenny, who I love. So, um, oh, and the other thing that's coming up is um, I rejoined, I hadn't been a member of the Knitters Guild for a long time. I used to be a member and then I just found I wasn't going and I, full I was full-time work at the time and just things were crazy. And I started teaching at the yarn shop. Anyway, I let my membership lapse, but I joined again this year because I thought, no, I do want to be part of that as well. This does seem to be a bit of a theme, stretching myself a bit thin, but um, I'd like, I'd at least like to know what's going on. And they have a retreat every two years and even years. So there's a retreat this year from the 2nd to the 4th of August down in Stamble Tops, which is, I already live on the south side of Sydney and it's, so it's a bit further south. I've been to a sewing retreat there before back in 2019 and it was really nice. Beds are fine. Like, you know, it's all bunks and it's like where they do kids camps and stuff. Um, but the food was nice and the, um, you know, the environment was like beautiful, it's beautiful, Stamble Tops down there, it's like in the bush and it's absolutely gorgeous, although I mean I kind of live in the bush here, but this is much more bushy. So yeah, that's the 2nd to the 4th of August and they actually, in the Knitters Guild, in their newsletter, they asked if anyone would be willing to teach, like volunteer to teach a workshop on um, a couple of different things and I put my hand up for German short rows, so um, I'm going to teach a like a, just a little mini workshop there. And they usually have like vendors come. And I, I have been to a Knitters Guild um, camp before in Hornsby, but that was maybe 2018. It's re yeah, I think 2018, so a long time ago. Um, and that was one when Nor that Nora G Gorn came to. That was fantastic. I'm such a fan of hers. So um, I don't know who the guest speaker is um, or, you know, guest person is, but like it doesn't matter I'll, I'll get to catch up with other knitters and um and hopefully hopefully fingers crossed beck might be able to come down as well <sighs> right i've been trying to get these short and then i've just like ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. so um anyway i'm gonna stop now thank you so much for watching um yeah let me know if you want me to do a video of um the un unpicking the provisional cast on and folding the brim for the oslo hat um, because I am definitely going to do that this week and then hopefully I'll try and get that up on the weekend. Yes. All right. And I will be back next week. Bye.